she gave Jennifer brought you a packet. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get started. Guys, good morning, everyone. I think we're gonna this calls for roll call, but uh, I think we're gonna go around the room and introduce ourselves. We've got some other visitors here in the back. Um, so that everybody knows who everybody is, and I'll start. I'm Teresa Cromwell. I'm the chair, and we'll go this way. <laughs> My name is Carl uh, Blair, and I've been on this board for two terms now, and I'm grateful to be in service to my community and to this board. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ron Adams, and uh, this is my 14th year on this board. I was on the board of adjustment before that and a background in city management and uh, and this is a volunteer opportunity that uh, while you're retired to to um, you know provide service to the community you do like that so thank you Beth. i'm laura dominic i've not been here 14 years i am not retired but i still appreciate the opportunity to serve i believe i'm in my second term or came in in the middle of someone and died i'm not so sure <laughs> Henry Corner, uh, retired fire captain after 40 years on the Independence Fire Department, mm. former president of the Firefighters Union, and uh, former head of the Coalition of Labor Unions with a degree in labor studies. And I'm here with a keen interest, like from a career interest, and hoping I can be helpful with them. I'm glad to have you. Yeah. Can we go back here? I'm Luke Crowder. I'm working at ICL. Been here for five years. I'm a meter reader. Uh, Chris Fairbank, firefighter with the City of Independence and president of Local 781 Special Firefighters Independence. Chad McGregor, IBW Local 53 business representative. I've worked for the city previously for 15 years as a veteran lineman at ICL. Hmm. I'm Mike Stewart. I'm a current employee. I've been with the city uh, over 29 years. Hmm. What department? Uh, building inspections and community development. Very good. Mm. Uh, Jennifer Baird, I'm with Lauder Municipal Law, and we represent the City of Independence. Jennifer Varga, Chief HR Officer. Adam Norris, Deputy Manager. <laughs> That's everybody. Okay. I was going to say, yeah. Uh -huh. I should have said that. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, that's okay. Thank you. Adam, there was another lady that. Yeah, she's. There. I think the door she is works in this. I mean, she he can unlock. I think she can card in. OK, we'll go ahead then with the agenda. Uh, you all have a copy of the agenda. If not, we can get you one. <clears throat> so the next item is we're going to approve the minutes. Uh, we've got some old business, uh, some new business, and then we'll talk about what's going to happen at our next meeting. So let's go back up to approval of the minutes. And I think we have uh, October and December minutes. November. November. November December. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So if I could have a motion to approve those minutes, that would be great. I'll make a motion. A okay. second. Great. Any uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay, let's get to the good stuff here. Um, we've got old business now, and so we're going to look at revisions to Article 2, um, and we're going to review the timeline for the review of the policies and procedures. So let's get into the policies and procedures, and let's look at Article 2. And you all have a copy, have had a copy of that or time to read it and review it, the red line version of that. OK, um, any discussion, questions, comments, concerns, good jokes? I have several items. Are we going to kind of take this by section? Let's do maybe? that. Let's, let's go by section. Okay, OK, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, where do you want to start, Laura? Um, 
this is a real quick one in the title. I think this is still going to be article two. It looks like it says one. Well, right. If I can make a statement oh, yeah. maybe before we yeah. start the questions, if that's yeah, okay. yeah, that sounds good. One of the things amazing. that um, when we're looking at the policy in uh, as it, as in total, um, article one is definitions. And one of the things we like to do is take that article one, put it at the back. We want to, because we're going to be working, I think, on those definitions as we go through the policy. And I just think that rather than going through all the, you know, this is where everyone wants to go to first is they want to go into the policy, but not flip through all the definitions. We just think that that'd be a better way to set up our policy is put the definitions in the back. So that's why that we did change this to Article 1. Oh, it, this is going to be now part one. Okay, that's, okay. I was like, it's one day. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's our recommendation. Yeah. Oh, well, and so I thought too. Gonna... Sometimes definitions is not in an article. You know, it's yeah. a definition. Um, yeah. I personally, but it's not a big deal. I personally like the definitions up front, so I can like when it come to a capitalized word, I might okay, you know, back to the front to see it. But I, but that's neither here nor there. As long as it's there. We're going to keep. Yeah, we will keep yeah. it. It's just. We thought that it would be better just to put them in the back. Yeah. That's all. That's all that yeah. is, and that's why we've changed this to Article One. Uh, second thing is, is we did make a change in between when you know we're required under our policies to post these changes at least ten days before this meeting, and then uh, get you the packet so um, the Tuesday before the Friday meeting. So in between the posting and this, we had made a change, and so. Um, one of the things I just want to note is that in here, because we made a change, it messed up the formatting and the reference to different sections. And so I want you to know we're going to change that before okay. it goes anywhere beyond this board. So right. it'll reference the right section. So there might be, and Laura's shaking her head. So I guess yeah. you probably saw that yeah. too. But I'll, and I'll make, I'll cross those notes out. So yeah. That, so okay. so we'll, we'll definitely make those changes, but because formatting can sometimes be a little tricky and you change one thing and then there's all these codes and sure. it changes everything else and so just to in order to meet our deadlines we just said we'll we'll just know that we will make those changes so it comes out of here the yeah. way you guys the way you want it and so um jennifer is there anything else you wanted to add okay can i ask a question about the 10 day thing is i was under the impression and i could be wrong is it i thought it was 10 days ahead if we were actually having the where we're going to make a recommendation meeting is that correct but so okay yeah, i'm sorry but i don't mind doing that and i understand i mean then that gives employees and the retirees time to read things more i mean i don't have a problem with that but right. I think the 10 day for is for like when we're going to be in here having a true public hearing. So but well, early is not bad. I was going to say to me, it's not clear. Um, this is section B in this policy and it talks about. Um, I mean, we, I think personally would love to be able to meet first, discuss oh, absolutely. those changes or whatever, <laughs> make the, you know, have people ask questions and then have the public hearing. Oh, yeah, but absolutely. that's not how I'm reading this. And so out of abundance of caution, we just said let's post this 10 days prior if you want to if you feel good about this at the end of this meeting and say go forward sure. then we're able to do that but my guess and what we're we're anticipating is is there's probably going to be a few more changes and revisions yeah. and stuff to look at yeah no, that, meeting, yeah, that makes complete sense. we just yeah I, I always feel like it's better to give more notice and get that information out there so you know i'm definitely on that so okay. i appreciate that absolutely okay and with that, I'm sorry. No, no thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so Laura, did you have yeah, um, a question? Yeah, I'm ended. So on um, section A, purpose, I didn't have anything in there. Thought that looked great. Didn't find anything. Um, section B um, goes with my question on section D. Um, in between is C, which looks great. What page um, are you on, Laura? Uh, uh, page article. Sorry, what page? I am, I am talking about right here oh, okay. and That's here, right. B and D. Yep. Gotcha. Thank yep, you. yep, yep, yep. Page one, I guess I should mm -hmm. say. Page one, B and D. Um, I'm confused, and I had sent a message to Zach because I was just trying to understand where this is. Because let me jump down to where we're changing. I'm, and I don't. To me, I, I don't want hair splitting about what the actual title is, like doesn't matter to me doesn't matter but I, I need to understand the part so let me start with this 
So on the org chart that we got in July, um, this says your title was the CHRO. And you reported to Kidney, who then Adam, then Zach, mm -hmm. right? The way I read this is, if I understand correctly, so you're the CHRO, and you're going to report directly to the city manager. So are you, so you will, there will be no, well, and I, like when I say city manager, I don't know, Adam and Zach, you know, the city manager's office. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be reporting directly there or is Kidney still going to be in between? And I shouldn't say, I'm, I'm being informal. I shouldn't, but, you know, director right. of administ yeah. finance um, administration. I, I, he's still going to be. Okay. But I don't understand how that. Okay, so so do you think that should say the finance and administration director? Yeah, uh, because whoever, it, well, no, I will say I understand what you're saying here when you say under the supervision, which is everybody is under the supervision right. of the city manager, right? It's not your direct report. Right. So I see what you're saying there, and I think that makes more sense to me. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. So, and you, I know you'll make the or chart. Well, it already is that it is right so yes it is all right, right. check yep. check love it that's your chart yes absolutely and i apologize for not having i second read that again and it doesn't say direct supervision it says under the supervision which i think a lot of stuff says that yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and clearly everybody's under the supervision of the city manager uh and if you want me to keep going, section E to me looks fine. I didn't have any comments there. Am I getting ahead of anybody else who wants to say something? Um, so uh, section F is fine. I resolved my own question on that one. Section G, um, I think this maybe, maybe this is a new HR like way of doing things, I don't know. And it's not again. It's it's splitting hairs, and I don't care exactly either way. But we took out the equal is the EEOC title there. I kind of like when it says EEOC in there, so that it like oh, there's your EEOC policy. But well, we do. Well, and I don't. I think we should be clear not to say EEOC because that's actually, oh yes. I'm sorry. So EEO. Just EEO. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. I I just I like that so that when somebody says where's that policy? Oh well, it's right there. You know. But if you decide to stick with non-discrimination, I'm going to yeah. Sure. Well, all, actually, all of these yes, are EEO all, policies. All I, EEO, yeah. Right. So um, I don't know if maybe the title needs to reflect. Yeah. So and I'll just throw that thought out. You guys, okay. you know, I mean, I don't, whatever. I just like that phrase there, you know, because it's a catch. It's a, it's the law part that you can you know, really see it. Um, on the first sentence of G, um, I, I'm sorry, I did this over a couple of days, so I have some time to go back. Um, I think the first sentence should say, it is a policy of the city to ensure equal employment opportunity. I think the word employment needs to be there between equal and opportunity. And, and take it out of, it says, assure equal opportunity to all persons and employment opportunities. Regardless of race. So mm -hmm. you think you take it out of that? Yes. Okay. Yes. See, and that's where I that's where I'm doing this three days ago is like, okay, so yes, what I, I this is what I thought for changes is like, let me just read the sentences I would see it, and then right. you guys can say. So I would say it is the policy of the city to in, to assure equal employment opportunity to all persons, regardless of mm -hmm. instead of the employment being the word employment being after. But again, that's Blooming hairs. I just like when again, equal employment opportunity is a phrase, but okay. nothing, um, nothing earth shattering there. Um, the last section of that first paragraph of G, where it says the city assures it will not discriminate in recruiting, hiring, da 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 da. da. Um, I went back and looked at like the previous policy and something else. Um, do we? My first thought was we need the word discipline in there, but I don't like just the word discipline. The word that was used before, I believe, was or personnel actions. Because you don't want to discriminate. I mean, you don't want to discriminate from A to Z, which is what you're indicating, but we previously had in there or personal personnel actions. And it, that would match the website too. 
which of course I know that some of this is going to change on the website once we get through it. So uh, yeah, that okay. makes sense. Right. Okay. Um, oh, and also there it says on the website, and and I looked at the I looked up some stuff on SHRM, you know, to see what they were saying about policies, and they have the term and all other terms, conditions, and privileges of employment. So at the end of that sentence, yeah, that's where that yeah, would come in. yeah. Can you say that one more time? Uh huh. And all other terms, conditions, and privileges is of employment. Okay. okay, that's what I found in the ADA. So I, that kind of like covers you for yeah all that, which maybe then covers you for the personnel action too. But um, okay, then. Uh, the, in the next paragraph there it says the city shall take appropriate action from the time of from this and this is that that first sentence in that paragraph seems redundant it says that seems that very first sentence seems like it sounds like what you've said up here okay. and i mean no. I, redundant's fine and so i don't know if you just want to make a note i just think it says Thank we're going to do it again you know kind of thing um and I'm good with all the rest of that paragraph. Um, so then the next paragraph that starts, if somebody believes uh, there's been, you know, an, a violation basically, uh, that they should uh, bring it to the attention of. That paragraph, I think, should be covered under the section complaint procedure, because we have that, you know, like we're talking yeah. about. ADA and harassment and non-discrimination, sexual harassment, and everything, and then here's how you handle all those. Um, and I and I and I want to ask the question, and I do this, like if we do it, a lot of policies is it says bring the matter to the attention of the chief human resources officer. I I mean I don't mind that, but I think too that they should have like you know how usually I'll say like their direct supervisor the. Mm -hmm. CHRO, the, you know, the whoever. So if they don't feel comfortable coming directly to you, they can go to their supervisor. Okay. But again, I don't know then, I didn't see to how that is referenced over in the complaint section. So mm -hmm. I personally just think that paragraph goes up there somewhere. And maybe we would, we would have more people they can bring it to the attention of. Should we say something like, if, if the employees at least they, you know, there's been a violation. Right to refer to that? I mean, should we say refer to the policy or just take that out altogether? Because what if I'm what if I'm reading this and I go, I feel like something has happened, right? It doesn't really tell me what to do. Right. Um, so should I should we we should at least direct them to the complaint procedure or say that yes. go to your supervisor or whatever and and file a complaint pursuant to the you know whatever. Yeah and maybe we just say yeah if an employee believes that the employment decision has been made, da 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 C complaint right. section okay. N or M wherever it's at. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they know, okay, I go ahead. But we don't get redundant. Because I don't I don't like when we're in any document anywhere I'm at when you repeat things that then might not match. So, yep. Okay. Agree. Totally agree. Okay. Okay, good. That uh, makes sense. M's gone, N's gone. Um down there on O at the bottom that was crossed out. Um we don't, and I don't think we have it anywhere else now. This affirmative action plan. Um, I assume we still have an affirmative action plan. I think so. I just it seemed out of place to me on where to put this. Which yeah, is why I agree. I have made a note, and I'm okay. thinking I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere else in the policy. We just need to reference it. But it okay. is a resolution, and it's right. It's, it's, yeah, I tried to out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're you're on that one then. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, and this is a side note question. Do we have a drug free workplace policy or is that mm -hmm. part of what's coming? Uh -huh. Okay, we do. Okay. I just was noticing that because I was looking out at the RFPs to see what we require from other companies when an RFP comes in. So, okay, that answers the question. Am I free to continue? <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it just tell me if you're like, I had a comment. <laughs> Quiet. I was. I'm going to if I fall asleep. <laughs> I'll bump your knee. <laughs> Okay, let's see what I had under harassment. H, the so section H. Um, as you indicated, the section's going to yeah. change. All that stuff yeah. is, you'll figure, that's all stuff you figure out. Okay, so the sentence that I highlighted is the last sentence of H1 that starts with 
the city will make every reasonable effort to ensure. I just want to make sure everybody knows where I'm at before yeah. I. So after the yeah. word immediate termination, there's that sentence there. And I highlighted that and the note I made is. I noticed that this is under the harassment section, but not under the sexual harassment section. So I didn't know again, do we need to repeat the phrase, which I have a problem with the sentence. Does that need to be repeated under each of these? Or again, do we say go to the complaint section? Well, sexual harassment is part of the har so H is harassment and one and two. There's harassment and then there's sexual harassment. Correct. So um, so it's listed under one under harassment in workplace. That sentence is there because that's what we're talking about. Okay. But I don't see it under the sexual harassment number two section. Unless I'm missing it. Yeah. Please, if I'm missing it. Yeah, we, we probably should. But just yeah, just re reference there. Yeah. Again, just to either we need to have the yeah. same in every one or we just say it one place. So okay. Right. You understand the thought. Yes. Yeah. I know you'll figure it out. Okay. Um down on under sexual harassment, and this is um I don't know on this. Uh first of all, under the sentence that says sex stereotyping occurs when person perceives. Oh, yes, I personally would take the parentheses out because things to me that are parenthetical are kind of like, <laughs> you know, but like I think that's an important piece of it. Right. Or do you put that in definition? Is that maybe you think that's more? Yes, yeah, something yeah, this like is the that. definition. It's just yeah. trying to define this is what sex stereotyping is. Right. Mm -hmm. But Anytime I see something in parenthetical, mm -hmm. unless it's a reference to another section, it makes me think that it's. Oh, OK, well, whatever on that, you know, some people look past, but again, not a huge thing. Um, then and I'll and I kind of I have some things. I have a few things on this paragraph, so we give some examples. Um, explicit posters, calendars, photographs, you know, all that I didn't know if we needed to add anything in there about pictures on phones, texting, the electronic stuff, or do we just say, have the phrase in there, but not limited to, yeah, so. you know, I, I, you would hope that people don't, that they understand that they're not supposed to be doing it on their phones or their computers or their email either, but just having that like, mm -hmm. they do it anywhere. Right, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Um, then um, this last, this, uh, so where the end of the parenthetical is, mm -hmm. I think if I would suggest, depending on how we do this, that we start that as section C. Because we're talking about these behaviors include and, you know, all this stereotyping and everything. I think then it being section C, where you're encouraging people to report is something that like warrants its own section. It just seems like the paragraph kind of goes, you know, on. Okay. Yeah. Again, not not huge, but okay. So this is the this is one of the big things that concerns me. Um, it's going to be the last two sentences is where every employee. So I'm on the bottom of page three for everybody section. For make sure everybody like she just keeps talking where she at. Uh, every employee is mandated to raise any questions or concerns that sentence. And then the consequences of failing would be an accessory to the harassment. Um, I, I, I just I don't believe that should be in there at all. Um, and I think of an example like uh, say I'm in the kitchen. Warming up my soup at work and I hear two people talking about. What might be sexual harassment? But I don't know them. Not me. I'm not their supervisor. Now, if you're supervisor that that we that's the rule you do you have to report and go from there but if i'm warming up my soup and i overhear something i don't want i don't know how to judge if that's sexual harassment maybe they're dating each other you know what i mean maybe whatever they said is not something that bothers them not directed at me it's not offending me i can walk away and whatever i don't i don't feel as though anybody is um like I need to rescue somebody in that situation. Like there's like I can't leave the room because she or he's going to do that to she or he or he or he type thing. I don't think that as an employee I should have unless I'm a supervisor. I don't have any mandatory reporting requirements. 
I've never seen that. And I don't think people should be held to the standard of trying to figure that out. I don't believe there's federal law that it says that employer, it, has, it falls under super as a supervisor, but under federal law, um, there's no federal law that requires confidence or, or witnesses to report instances. Well, and I think here, one of the things from, from my perspective, from a legal perspective is, is that, um, you know, someone could say, well, you knew or should have known this was happening and you never reported it. And so then the employer gets in trouble for it when it's like, we, we, no one ever told us, no one ever told us this was going on in, you know, the public works department, which is at a different building. And so this is just one of those things. Now, I don't know in your situation, I, I'm not saying that they could come back and say, well, didn't you warm up your soup that day? And didn't you, I mean, I don't think that's really the intent, but I'm but certainly if you thinking. Go to that, the paragraph before goes, speaks of the city encourages reporting of all perceived incidents of sexual harassment, regardless of who the thing may be. Obviously, we do want to encourage. Obviously, yeah. we, we want to promote an atmosphere where if you see something to report it, but then to follow it up with every employee is mandated and they can become an accessory. Again, I think that puts a really broad statement out there that can be that, that's dangerous. Um, because they, under federal law, again, under federal law, it is required for supervisors to report it. But the regular employee, it, sure. it doesn't fall under that same rule of law. Well, again, it's a, it's a protection for the sale. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll make my comment afterwards. Right. Go so, ahead. Um, okay. it, I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. I get what both of you are saying from a, you know, from an employer liability standpoint. Um, employers could get into a lot of trouble even when they don't know. And it's like, well, employee, if you would have told us, we could have addressed it immediately, but you didn't. And now we're, we're, we're liable and we're paying for it. Yeah. Yes. So well, I, and there I are can't, circumstances I can't where if you that. are witnessing sexual harassment and you don't say anything, whether you're a supervisor or not, and there's an investigation, you. You can get in trouble for that if you are allowing it and witnessing it and so are saying nothing. And it becomes, you know, I, depending on the circumstances, of hmm. course, um, could we reword this in a way? Um, yes. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I thought that, I, you, were, no, you were following. I, no, that question. But, <laughs> um, I mean, all employees have the obligation to make sure that, you know, they have a moral obligation to do that, but they do not have a mandatory reporting requirement, well, and, as Chris is indicating for law. I mean, if there's a law, if there's a section of the law that says that, or there's case law that says that, look, you're going to be in trouble if your employees yeah, don't, don't yeah. tell you what's going on. Yeah, no, but you're going to be in trouble. Supervisory, it follows at the supervisory level, but not the employee level. Well, I, I just asked that to be reviewed and looked at to make sure that that language is correct, because again, when we're we start mandating is under under federal law it requires the supervisor to report and take those necessary steps but it's not up to the employee to determine or to facilitate city policy I, that doesn't I, fall upon the employee to do that i would like to just share a little bit of my experience i've been on this earth for a long time there's gray hair up under this hat uh there's been a lot of situations in my life okay i, I, I must speak very candid and i've been approached with racial jokes the, I, and I'm not stereotyping, but the good old boys will come and say, hey, everybody getting where I'm going. Uh -huh. And guess what? Here's the thing. Me being in, me, and it has happened to me in my life multiple times. Here's the problem. The prop. I see this as a protection. I do. OK, the wording needs to be. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. OK. But this is a protection. If I, and I have experiences, I go to a supervisor and the, the person that did the act and the group or the couple guys that's around laughing <laughs> is not going to report their buddy saying something like that to me. They're going to stick with it happened. It happens more. I'm 59. I just turned 59 Saturday. It has happened to me all my life on just about every freaking job I've had. Mm -hmm. Had this been in their policy, and I, I don't know if it should be mandated, if this had been in their policy, guess what? Those bystanders or the person or the group that was there, uh, that was associated with this, this joke, mm -hmm. would have 
they won't that he, I, I, what I'm trying to say they they won't have that protection of saying, well, he Ron's my buddy. I ain't I ain't saying nothing about that. I know it was wrong and I laughed, but I ain't got nothing to do with it. That's what happens. So here I am standing by myself reporting it. And then when the investigation happened, everybody's hands is up. So a protection like this is definitely needed. The words needs to be changed. OK, and if it's from a legal standpoint that Ron could get in trouble for and he didn't participate other than laughing, Ron can participate and, and, and he can get in trouble for not participating, but not reporting, hey man, that's wrong. We don't do that here, okay? We can't afford to do that. The city opens itself up to, to, a, a, uh, to, a, to a liabilities, <clears throat> okay? And, and it has happened. I'm, I'm positive yeah, it's happened, yeah. yeah. Well, let me, let me kind of, okay. let, me, let, let me see what you're saying, like if, if I'm understanding. So like you're in a room, you're standing over there, group's I'm over watching. here, and they say something very bad, you know, either racially or they could say sexual it to, harassment. They could, or say, it, they could right. say it to me or they could be saying it to themselves. Right, and you've okay? heard it. Right? And I hear it. Okay. And now you're going to go report that to up the chain, right? Uh -huh. They do an investigation. Right. And, she, okay. and that yeah. investigation, remember the, main, the, the core part of this. The core part of this is this. They're my uh, co-workers. They're hit the uh, the uh, no, under, under, they are the yeah. perpetrators friend, but their loyalty and their alliance is not with me. No, no, I understand. Not because that. we are separate we're from each other. We're talking about reporting of it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. okay. So, so, so let me let me just follow, let me follow. It would be better about. if the he was motivated. To, he's standing there. He laugh. It happens. It would be better if he motiv if if he has some some type of motivation or inclination that hey, I know that was wrong. I would know. And he has something within himself to say, right. hey, I ain't getting in trouble. Right. I'm not getting in trouble for with him. For him. He did that. So okay. if they ask me, I'm gonna be I am not just gonna be forced to tell the truth. I'm gonna tell the truth. Or no, 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 I know, and either, I agree with that. See, either you're or about just the reporting. You're talking about the investigation. Either or. Well, okay, I'm okay. Saying, so I'm let, let me throw of, you back in as an example. Like, let's say okay. let me, so again, you're here, you overhear this, and there's laughing. There's one guy, let's say, say his name's Tim, and he's the main guy making the comment, right? And they all laugh and whatever. You're con that offends you. You go and report it. So now Tim, the guy who has now done the harassment, he doesn't perceive he's done something, but okay. he is part of it. So is he going? Is he mandated to go and tell you that he did something wrong? He, I mean, that's not going to happen. You see what the I mean? Protection, the and protection. The protection that but is. The, but the but there. So the protection and then the that is needed that to around, be there. The protection that is needed to be in place. <laughs> is a protection that yes, he feels threatened, even though he had nothing to do. Yeah, we got that. Okay. Yeah, we got. He that. go and tell. It don't matter whether it, whether he was involved or anything. He need to. It's he a protection that he should do that. Morally, he should but do he it. But he should not be mandated and potentially disciplined for not. Morally, he should do it, and that's why we say from, my, from my my experience. Because mm -hmm. listen. That never in 59 years on this earth has anyone came forward on their own. So moral, we all, everybody got, every one of us have a moral line right. that nobody else, that they don't print out and say, hey, these are my morals. Right. Okay. Right. So we can't judge or we can't measure individual morals. Yeah, moral sounds good it, terminology, but action, what I mean by action, yeah. He had, I, my personal experience, I think he, for me and a lot of uh, others, okay, it could be women, it could be any, any, mm -hmm. any circumstance. I think if that, yeah, it's just me, and I, I, I'm not saying that I'm correct, okay? No, I, I'm I just saying, hey, exactly open, on the right I'm, track. I'm saying open your mindset, get out of that box. That's what I'm asking or, or suggesting, get out of the box. And, uh, and, and, and I understand the way this saying. is written, we're looking it's, at an employment what, 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 policy. Yeah, the way it's it's written, it's written in a it, it, it it's written in a way that uh, the protection of the violator won't be, uh, it won't be there. Okay, because we're you what you basically what you say. Hey, if his morals don't affect him, he shouldn't he shouldn't he should be able to walk away, no consequences, no nothing. Because he, he, he just, it just ain't morally right to say, hey, listen, Ron, 
if you you and uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. If if you <laughs> and him witness uh, something, whether it's personally done, talk said to me or 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 uh, Teresa, if you two witness this and there's no consequences for you or there is no motivation for you to report it, then and we're leaving it up to your morals and Ron's morals, then we are out of it. Okay. But I think it, 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 if there's a motivation or some type of uh, like the the uh, 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 like it says the way it's written, we we'll propel this type of behavior across the board never to exist because everybody would know. Hey, if you're around somebody and they say something stupid, all of us are mandated to go and tell them. Tell, you. okay, all of us across the board. But if we waiting on his morals. Uh, his his moral at, at latitude and hers. Guess what? We we still we're in a we're we are in a position of liability, and that's where I'm thinking that this city needs the protection from. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I just want to. Yeah. Okay. So these personnel policies and procedures. This is another one. There's no. This is so I am morally and completely on board with that concept. I get that. But the law and That's unless right. there's exact case law and that applies to us that we can be provided with, you know, that applies to our federal district or wherever the case law is. The, we cannot tell people that they have to report something that they see unless they are supervisors we can tell people that and we have I was that, we have she's our right expectations should be higher we should hold she's ourselves right. to the highest standard. highest standard yes but and, and maybe i agree no. we could reword this to say it is the expectation of the city that every employee you know well, blah 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 yeah and but, then you take we, out the you know, accessory thing things that, in our disciplinary action that say you know you can be let go for failure to perform your job that's not a legal. There's nothing legally that protects you from not. But if you can't do, you know what I mean? Like not every single thing in a handbook it's, is is legal. We we, ha, we have a we have a standard that we. It's a problem. Well, okay, and I have to. no problem with that. Like I think we should we should, and we should say something like that. We expect the highest from our, like I'm afraid whatever you know. We expect the highest. <clears throat> Reporting, you know, like we we expect you, we hope that you will, we want you to, we whatever those words are. But when you get down to mandate, and if someone doesn't do it, and then you start to call them an accessory to the harassment, the word is now it's on important. now that becomes discipline on me. It's like, wait a minute, I just happened to be in the room heating my soup up. But now somebody says, well, Laura Dominic was in there. She heard all that. Yeah. And then you come to me and say, OK, Laura, you are now considered an accessory to the harassment and you will fall under the discipline policy. We're, we're talking really about sexual harassment in right. that statement. We're talking about if you see. Right. If I see somebody in, grab somebody in on me and I'm like, hey, don't do that. You kind of have an obligation. You maybe, have, maybe I, I, I won't, but those types of things. There needs to be an expectation of all employees to, to, absolutely. You know, to see something. But again, it, it's just that you know, you just, say, just modifying the language to, to okay. do that. We need to continue to encourage and yeah. and promote and foster a, a attitude of if you see something that that is affecting the employee, that we do need to report it, and we need to be either good stewards to to our fellow employees and, and do that. But again, when when it has the connotations of mandating and becoming accessory. I, when, yeah. Maybe I don't know the two individuals, and I and I just passing by, and I don't know this the context of anything. And I'm just passing by in a hallway, but now I was there, and now I'm an accessory to that in facing discipline action. That's a that's a scary situation to be. In. Well, and honestly, depending on the situation, whether it's in the handbook or not, during an investigation, if you could be disciplined for something, so I, you know that sexual harassment is illegal. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it, there is no question, yeah, yeah. and and we have the highest obligation to protect our our employees. And if you and look at the next page at the very bottom, there's a good phrase. Yeah, I'll, I was going to say he. You can have your hand yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can, can, can I? Can yeah. I make? A, can I ask and then get to you, Luke? Is that okay? Sure. One second, just one second. 
on the next page there where it says down under number eight where it's crossed out i like that phrase responsibility for enforcement is responsibility of each employee department director or supervisor to create an atmosphere of sex free of sexual harassment this includes informing everybody of the policy making clear that it is not tolerated you know so you know and like that kind of language and we would encourage reporting any of that yeah okay is that yeah pardon me, I interrupted. you said before that uh the city can get in trouble if something happens and you say that you might not have known about it you can get in trouble still because no one reported it how many people have to report it before the city would do something about it just the one just the one so the person who got harassed if they don't report it why would the other ones be in trouble for not reporting because in situations like a woman being uh she the blowback or the uh, retaliation. That's the same for the other people. Too. Okay. The, what I mean by the retaliation. Someone can get blowback from other employees. Not if other they, employees. If she don't, it, 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 this deals with a bigger dynamic than just, okay. Sometimes, or a lot of times, women will go years without saying, hey, I was uh, assaulted. Okay. Yeah, no, this person's fault. Okay. She went years. Saying she will go because in her mind the retaliation from of reporting it prevents her from moving forward so she says nothing i would feel the same thing if i just witnessed something and said i'm going to turn this person in which later could burn a bridge for me because i turned this person in and they knew that i was a witness to it i would feel the same <clears throat> same feeling like, that like now i'm going to get in trouble later on because because you did the right thing same with her. She yeah. could turn it in and do the right thing instead of waiting seven years. But now that she didn't, this person's in trouble because they didn't turn it in. Like, why are they liable to turn it in if a person being harassed isn't liable to turn it in? It, it, it doesn't make sense. And if the city would know about it, if one harassed was turning it in. Or somebody could harassed. have said, I saw. Yeah. Him grab her in the lunchroom and yeah. reported it because yeah, of a moral obligation to do that, but person, not a requirement. Yeah, the person who was harassed could say this happened, and if you don't believe me, this person, this person was right. raised and talked to them. Is that, that the witnesses are now not an accessory for not saying anything? Exactly. But I mean, there'll be witnesses if need be. Right, and they will be required to. Yeah. 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 They yeah. should be required to run and tell right away. Like, hey, this just happened. Is that person okay? Well, I mean, and I, unfortunately, the situations um, that I've been, I've been approached with are, like, for example, one city, um, it was a it was a division of the public works department it had one female employee and she was terrified to to tell anybody about the the type of language, the somewhat abuse that she was suffering from. Mm -hmm. And um, I happened to be given a presentation and I wasn't even her. I wasn't even her legal counsel or the legal counsel for that city, but she kind of confided in me. And so I said something. Um, I know she, she just didn't want to because she's like, everyone will know since I'm the only female in that department, you know, and it's going to make my life harder. And, but I mean, I well, felt like we like got the, to. The city needs to do something to make it more for the one harassed to be able to approach them. And, and that's part of that witnesses. in here. You call on the approachability of HR or your supervisor to know that if I do turn this in from being harassed, that I'm not going to get blowback from other people. And I and there are some anti-harassment, you know, whistleblower, the yeah. provision of protection. Like, now you guys are in charge of taking care of this. I think again, I think just the wording problems. needs to be. Uh, We'll work on it. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll work on it. If you don't do that, there, yeah. I, because I don't want something to turn into because you didn't do that. Now you're being disciplined. I'm like, I was in the, I was in the kitchen warming up my soup, and I saw something. I don't know what was going on, and I took my soup and got the hell out of there. And I think during the but, investigation, if that was really what happened, I think that the investigation said, but, but okay, I should not, not be investigated. Well, no, you're, invest investigate no, you're investigating the situation. Me. Because somebody and says Laura Dominic was in the room and she heard it. Did she report it? No. 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 Oh, well, now we got to bring Laura Dominic in and say, you didn't follow the personnel policies and procedures. You were mandated to do that, Laura no, Dominic. I mean, again, the investigation will take a look at it and say, oh, okay, well, you were just passing by. Okay, this is not culpable. Yeah, this is not culpable. I mean, there's going to be an investigation. It's not just a flat out, you're okay. liable, but if something happens. I mean, happens, and that's, like, and that's you, what I, this sounds like it is. 
it's A to B. If you didn't do it, you're an accessory, and now I'm up for discipline. That's what it, that's the core of what I hear. We'll I think we will reword it. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll reword it. Online. Like, do I have three hours to turn this in or three days or? You can you. Yeah. No. No. Just mm -hmm. like, oh, I'll get to turn in tomorrow. We'll read. No, yeah, we'll redo it. We'll I do want to. No, Henry no, has a comment that. Reporting the incident. Yeah, he's not getting turned in. Yeah, reporting witness, an actual incident. If I witness something going on, how long do I have before I'm becoming in trouble or being considered an accessory before I report it? There, it's. I don't have a timeline for you. Right, that would be. And that's why I mean, if you saw murder language <laughs> rewarded, and I think I think we understand where we're yeah, where we're all right. feeling yeah. at. Butch, did you have something to say? I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity, Madam Chairman. That am I authorized to talk? Yes. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, I've been privileged to mention I had 40 years as a fireman, and I had uh, I served in the Navy, the Marine Corps Reserves, and the Air Force Reserves, and did 32 years in military service. I'm 75. I have seen the gamut of <laughs> of all of it. Okay. I've experienced stuff that should not have happened. Some did get corrected, some did. And there is knowing what's going on. There is participating by laughing. And then there's conspiracy by everybody. They cover it up. Covering it up. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you have that, and then you have the troop that disagreed with me. Rubbed her breast on me and run in and said, I grabbed her breast, mm -hmm. which never happened. So, I mean, you got, and I've seen other where the file is used to return a grudge, and then I've seen where I've had to get lawyers to make the city agree that they didn't do, do what they agreed that they're not going to do. That was the settlement where they were harassing a couple of the female firefighters. Mm -hmm. mm. So, what I think is when they're knowingly, when they're fully aware of harassment or what should they should know is harassment, then there's an obligation for them to report. Okay. I don't know how you punish them for not reporting. Right. But but if they if they're a participant, you know they had a say. They laughed. They were in the circle. You see that? I mean, there's so many different scenarios. Yeah. That I don't know how you write to them, but to assume that. I'm an accessory to the robbery because I come to work. I'm in the same room. Two people that I believe have a, a, a good relationship all of a sudden blows up. And I didn't know that their their actions that I've seen before are now not good. But because I truly didn't know. So I I don't know how to make just the present your presence make you an accessory. And, and if that become the, the the rule, then as a matter of self preservation, I would other if we're if I was actually doing the job next to an employee and I keep my mouth shut. Other than that, I'd be away from all other employees to where I did not put myself in a danger zone of being an accessory. So I, it's it it's kind of a it's a mess <laughs> to try to figure out. Hopefully, the wordsmith attorney can help us. <laughs> well, we're yeah, well, we, well, we're yeah, 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 I think we're, yep, yeah, I think we're all think on the same page on that. On. And then yeah. I, I, I have uh, other points that we've already covered, but I'm oh. going to wait if you okay. want me to wait. I could get it all at the end if you want, but I just thought I wanted to weigh in here because mm -hmm. that's a bigger one. Yeah, the accessory is something that we really need to have it fit the situation and not just accuse somebody. Punish somebody for being an accessory just because they were there. Okay. And I think you, yeah. you guys can figure on that. I think we got yeah. it. Okay. Uh, we got it. We got it. On harassment, okay. though, on this. Uh, Which page are you on? On the uh, regardless. No. Three. The one where even if it's not substantiated. <laughs> so I think that's coming up under. You on page four? Oh, fast. See what I got? I got I got the one that had the at will employee. Oh, no, so yeah. So so I can't, can't I'm happy to keep going. And there was comments I wanted to make before, but on the harassment, where it's uh, when it was not uh, is okay, even if the result of the investigation 
produces insufficient evidence to support the claim. Does that mean that the person claimed against is gets exonerated? And uh, because I don't where are you at? Page I'm sorry, two. Forgive me. Uh, I got G, it right here. Yeah. G, Page two G. G third paragraph. That I'm suggesting that we move to yeah. the complaint section. One, two, three. It, even if the parole you believes that an employee or uh, uh, an employment decision has been made, is that where you at? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That last okay. sentence. There will be no retaliation against an employee in good, uh, who files complaint in good faith, even if the result of it uh, produces insufficient evidence to support the complaint. Complaint. Where um, some you have somebody complain against a superior officer, and it, there was nothing there. It was a it was an unsupported claim, unsubstantiated. Does that officer get a clean record? Does he get? Does he or she get put in a record? This, this was. There's, I think the investigation would be they, all in there, and then it there becomes be a in. shadow on that person. I mean, uh, if you look at Justice Kavanaugh, that'd be kind of a, an idea where something sticks on you that wasn't established or substantiated. So, how do you get an employee to know how to have a, their name be smirched or the position be smirched when it is not supported? Because there are incidents of bad faith reporting. And now we used to have language that said that you could be in trouble for bringing a, a false claim. And that uh, is that is in here. Uh, yes, we still have that? yes, we have, we have yeah. the yeah. in good faith. Yeah, we are currently but, yeah. to page two, section G. So is that is that what covers bad claims? Because yeah, yeah, it is referred somewhere well, down here. We did have something before that. If they knowingly brought a bad claim, uh, that there was some there was some repercussion for, for that, that. Mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. and we now, do have do in good, we yeah. do have in good faith coming up here. So and yeah, what are the repercussions that we have? Well, that's and that's in the next that's coming up in the but near the end. Of, <laughs> no, I mean addressing what Henry said. I, I agree with what he said. Right, and, but if we keep people, going, we're, we're going to get. But if, see, if we if we if we take that point and keep moving, we're going to get to retaliation and all that yeah. in the next three pages. So keep the thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to close, but I've got A through uh, F that I want to make comment on, but I I I didn't want to inter interfere, so I'm going to maybe wait till the yeah. end to comment on those. If you good. don't mind, yeah, because I think some of the right, your good points, but they're coming up. Okay. If we keep moving and then go ahead, does that make sense? No, moving on. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're let's, talking. I don't that's know. New. Okay, let's keep let's keep going because we we we've agreed on that. Part. Okay, next page, page four. I already mentioned I like the paragraph at the bottom, but you're going to wordsmith all that together. At the very top of page four, the number three there, in the title we say supervisor's responsibility, <laughs> and then in the next in the sentence we say all managers. Neither phrase is defined in definitions, and I and I get that it's not capitalized, so it wouldn't be. Um, but I think they should be consistent, and I think probably the word is supervisor. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Supervisors. That's just a. That's a might be splitting hairs, but I like to keep the words the same. Make sense? Yep. Okay. 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 Next. Page five. I. Um. Let me see. I have to, like I said, go back to. Um, OK, yeah, so that section there, the only thing I had a suggestion on was to uh, where it says, however, um, to take that out and just. Start that as a new sentence, but don't worry about that. I mean, whatever, that's not going to change anything. Now, here's where your comment comes in, Butch, is under I, the part that was crossed out. OK, again, page yeah. five. Section I. Section right. I. Right there. Yes. The crossed out paragraph below I. It says the applicants who believe they have been discriminated against or harassed and may file a complaint. I'm sorry. In accordance with. Yeah, yeah. no, that is that is not his point. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, who believe. Like, do we need to keep that phrase? Like, I believe 
that I'm experiencing this. Yes, that word needs to be there. You know, like, because it may not be that I am when it all comes down to it and they make the judgments and all that, but I... If I believe that if someone has offended me and sexually right. harassed me or discriminated against me or verbally abused me, if I believe that I should have that opportunity or to... Right. Or re, I should, I should be able to feel comfortable with going to my supervisor, the department head, right. department head, or anyone in the uh, uh, chain, chain of command chain, right. and report it. Okay, yeah. this particular okay. paragraph is referring to applicants, which we are, which is oh. should be addressed in the hiring process. Oh, that's the only reason why that's yes. Yep, very good. So, yeah. yep, we Just can say ignore, yeah. up above employees who believe they experience or yeah, believe they can are add it up there, yeah. but yeah. that's not why we, oh, we gotcha. That's it. That's crossed out because it's going to be addressed in the hiring procedures, which is another section. Very good. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yep, I got it. And that's good with everybody. Okay. Uh, now, still on page five, section J. Number one, there's just one missing and in there. At the end of the red in that first paragraph, basically it says advancement compensation, fringe benefits, job training, and then it should say and other terms, conditions, and employment. Okay. Just the word and there. And that's that phrase that we talked about before mm -hmm. the other terms. Are. So yeah. that's just adding an and. Okay, okay that's that. Um, okay, top of page six. I'm, I'm just confused. It says a reasonable accommodation is any change in the work environment. Get that. But then it says, or in the way things are usually done. That seems nebulous to me, but I don't know. Do you see what I mean? Like, it's a change in, you know, change in the way things are usually done. Well, and do you see where, where I'm saying that that seems nebulous? And if, well, yeah, I mean, I understand where you're going with it. And we're trying to address not only reasonable accommodations for employees, but even applicants. So maybe we typically would have someone fill out or write out an application or something. Maybe they mm -hmm. need help or something, I think. I mean, I, I, I don't I, I don't disagree that it is kind of it's hard to think about every possible reason that we would offer an accommodation. Yes. So we can I can definitely note it and see if there's maybe something else. Yes, something just like, a quick in the work environment or in yeah. ways that procedures are typically done. On, yeah, or something or, or pre, you know, pre precedents for something yeah. like you understand what I'm saying on it. So yes. that, that's okay. that's all I had on that. Um, OK. Section B, what, okay. let me do this a different way. Um, I, I think that Section C should become, should be moved up above B. So a reasonable accommodation is any change in the, and then I think the next paragraph should be reasonable accommodation, make the take the forms from all of that before you get to the next sentence. I just think it flows better, but that's not going to change anything. It just would move it from C to B. OK, mm -hmm. so that's all in that. Now, let's see. Um, that's my note here. OK, the first sentence of B, as it says, I believe is duplicative. So just 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 think just make a note for that i think it's duplicative of something else so just make a note see if i'm wrong or whatever i can't remember exactly where I, why but i think it's duplicative yeah. um uh, okay so in the next sentence so, so we're still in section b the second sentence it says Human resources will meet with the applicant or employee to discuss the applicant or employee's disability. So at first I go back to, you know, like I know that when you interview people, you can't ask them about their liability and all that. But so then I thought about it, but I'm like, I think what covers us here is that we already say, I, this is my note. I said, just want to make sure this is okay. 
but the applicant has asked for the accommodation. Right. So they've opened the door. We're not opening the door. Of course. So, yes. yep. So, right. yep. So move past yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Page six done. Page seven looks done. Page eight looks done. Nine done. I'm on a roll now. Yeah. 10 done. <laughs> okay. I'm on page 11. Um, this is simple. The second sentence there, depending on the type of conflict, may confer with the, I think there's a, the word the missing there, after with. Um, yeah, page 11. Mm -hmm. That's just a word. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, now this whole section K about, <laughs> always have to laugh about this because <laughs> I never really was like keeping animals on the premises really. I don't know that it needs to be in section one or two of the whole policies and procedures. Right. Um, or is it an administrative policy? Right. That, that's, so, that's, that's why we take yeah. it out of I was like, I was like, I got to that and I'm like, yeah, I it's not an employment like, policy. I know. Yeah. I read that and I'm like, right. why have we switched to animals? <laughs> well, and that, so that's why we're suggesting to take it out. Yes. And honestly, do we need it? I mean, the, the animal services has, sure, they have all their stuff. The police for their service dogs have all their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody needs a service or a therapy animal, that's going to be part of the yeah. interactive process with ADA. Right. I would right. question whether we even need it, but and if we do, I think it's more of an administrative policy that we can address through those channels. Yes, yes, it's that's why we crossed it out. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. Okay. And this is one of the things that, you know, mm -hmm. let her catch her breath for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping animals on city property. Uh, I mean, I used to bring my dog to work. You know, I even got I even photo ID. You know, I, and and I think that. Particularly in the healthcare field in hospitals, that's a coming trend. The 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 therapy with patients, long term care, nursing home residents, they love to have an animal present, and 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 really, uh, you know, I think it's important. In addition to people who have military background who need to have that PTSD mm -hmm. remedy. Uh, as well as employees. What, what's to say an employee can't bring a dog to work, maybe occasionally, you know, and not disturb other folks? So I don't see any reason not to have it there. And, you know, you know, there some employers say, bring your kids to work, babe. Yeah, bring your dog to work. We, we got dachshunds. I love to, my, my dachshund love to go to work <laughs> with me. In the evening, I didn't bring her in, in the but daytime. But this doesn't that this doesn't address yeah. that, Rahan. This is like it's strictly <laughs> prohibited. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, well, why, that, why don't we change it and not make it strictly prohibited? Well, and that's what I'm saying. But can it be an administrative policy versus an and an, it doesn't even go in this section because these well, are like eight. Lift employment. it out of here and put it in a different section. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But put yeah. it in your personnel room so employees will know. I'm assuming they get a copy of this when they come on board. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and okay. I agree with that. And I will tell you that I know because I worked at Great Plains SPCA, I mm -hmm. kind of know where some of it came from is mm -hmm. it's because like over in Johnson County, depending on the fire district, oh my gosh, you still have Kirby's at, No, she's the long pass. But you still have her ID. That's awesome. At Truman at the hospital nonetheless. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um this came about because like over fire stations that I worked at over in Johnson County, certain fire stations would allow the fire station to have a dog. You know, like, oh, the Dalmatian is right there, the fire truck. Well, there is a concern about the risk of the dog biting somebody, and then who's liable for that, or the dog has a disease and all that. So, but regardless, that's not a personal policy and procedure right. thing. And and again, if that the firefighters want to have a dog, I I, I don't know that. Yeah, that, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I care, but we have been dogs in station for years. But yeah, I it, mean, you know, the continued issues that we're addressing with mental health. That right. I can't, I can't say that I don't see in the future that we do have some kind of situation where we might need a dog or, or something just for for those situations. Yeah. So to have that maybe in yeah. another in yeah. another, another section, whether it's administrative that, policy yeah. or something to address that, yeah, that'd be definitely be open to talking. Well, and I know our police department have. Dogs right. and they have right. and they, they have their employees and, and they have their own policies that address that. And then anything that would happen on site as far as work comp, we could address that. 
I'm just, it doesn't, definitely doesn't fit here. Yes. And I, I am 100% in support of that. So you will never see me block that, <laughs> but I just don't, it doesn't oh, fit. Oh, no, here. no, you're, you're coming down sexual harassment, harassment, yeah. discrimination, ADA, compliance, retaliation, animals. Yeah. Yeah. And, you're like, <laughs> what? and I think this is a horribly written policy. It is. You know, like, yeah. I don't support this at all. So yeah, like, I, think I didn't read it because I was like this. There's effect on reasonable accommodation. So some. Oh, well, yeah, process. and that's oh, part of the inter that, that would be definitely part of the interactive process and mm -hmm. and and that would be covered under PTS, yeah. like support yeah. therapy docs that would be part of the interactive process and we would definitely go through that whole yeah. process yeah very good okay moving on moving on okay do you want do you have something to say on dogs yes sir. or animals <laughs> my understanding that was brought about because um uh, one of the animals kept on a property growled or bit somebody mm. or if you're feeding it you know we would have people feeding the dog that was a stray dog but they fed them so they could be around the station they'd uh bite or chase some citizen mm. so the city wanted to remove that liability of having because we we have we had a fire dog that's got a, a grave site at number three station. Really loved by everybody. He, he, uh, they light a match and he puts the fire up with his paw. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, That's good fire education right there. Stop the the paw. <laughs> guys were giving it, one guy didn't like him and was making my middle for him. The chief come down and said, that dog can do whatever he wants here. He's got more seniority than you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, right. But then we had later, we had Stella and Sparky, and we tried to replace that dog, and they were kind of a high-strung dog, and they were not totally perfect around everybody. And like when the kids come to the yeah. station to look, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. I think, yeah, we so, got it. So yeah. we, yeah. and then it's got, there were pe people, and I guess in other departments, that would feed an animal, keep it around, and then it, it, it would create a problem. So there's, it's your call, I don't care, you know, I. Which way you go, but if there's a liability there. I think the city would, would want to deal with. And if you're going to punish somebody that brings an animal in, then I think it would fall under policy and procedures. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I think and again, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not saying we would or wouldn't. But yeah. it, it, I don't think it. It doesn't. We're in Article One, so yeah. it doesn't belong there. I agree. So well, the prohibition uh, probably should belong in policy and procedures, but that's your guys's. Right. We'll go with that. Yeah. Yeah, that is like on the priority level of there mm -hmm. when we're still trying to get the ethics part of these. Okay. 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 On section I, there's just one more change. The last sentence, um, uh, and uh, maybe used by an employee to express breasts. Oh, uh, no, let's go with that. That is shielded from view and free from intrusion from coworkers, not for. Okay. One word. <laughs> Nothing more on breastfeeding. Okay. <laughs> and I that probably didn't mean sound right. Um, okay. Next section is the whistleblower section. Um, the the first, uh, page 12. Mm -hmm. And I just bought the title over because it printed on the other mm -hmm. page. Yeah. I just noticed after I read all this, first of all, that the whistleblower is said only in the title. <laughs> it's like nowhere else does it talk about whistleblowing. So as I just, you know, like just take that first read through it. It's kind of like, well, now what are we talking about? <laughs> you know, like something to define, you know, at, or at least reuse that word somewhere. It's not it's not obvious to me that when we go into a couple of definitions here that I have questions on, then we talk about reporting procedures. Because my first comment I made, it says to, <laughs> to invoke the protections of this section, I'm like, protections from what? Like, what are we talking about? I know what we're talking about, but it's just not said there. Do you see what I'm saying? It's okay. Like, wh where are we getting at? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I just somehow explaining that. Okay. Um, okay. So, I have a question on this. And I, on the, so at the very top under employee means, you know, this. I, I don't. I don't understand it. Can you explain the intent of including under the employee of definition members of appointed boards, commissions, and committees? What's the intent there? Well, I mean, I think, like for example, on this board, if you are aware of something that didn't that that that, that, that the governing body or that your employer 
which is the city. Well, not, not, well, not the city, not your yeah. employer, but yeah. Under this definition, we're saying, look, if you know something, the city's doing something that shouldn't be, we want you to, we want you to report it. So we want to include not only you, but the employees. That means part time. Uh, you know, yeah, all time. those. Yeah, I understand yeah. all those things. Um, but what the way I read it is when we go on talking about so I don't I'm not clear that and maybe a reread would help me but that you're saying okay first of all I, I'll just say from the tax perspective and the HR perspective I don't like the word employee being associated with anybody who's politically appointed you know because we're not employees you know these personnel policies and procedures do not apply to us we serve at the pleasure of the board so I don't like that reference there in terms of I don't want to be in the same category as employee because that's not a legal definition of employee um, and we are politically appointed um, so I understand I think what you're saying is that what you're trying to say is that we will have whistleblower protection if but when you lump us in with employees it sounds it seems to me as though you're also saying if somebody sees me do something as an employee in this definition, you know, I'm out talking about some private personnel matter at the bar and somebody's like, that's not cool, which it's not. They shouldn't have this. That's not a whistleblower thing that or if it is, that's with the city council that we answer to the council. I don't I don't. I just will say I don't want I don't want us in here. I, I, kind of think I go with it. It seems that the and maybe I'm skipping down into section B, but it seems vague on is this in the course of at work or is this when I'm off and I'm in the public? Well, and that's my next question. Okay. But if, it, it just seems that there's vagueness there of when this this rule applies. But I'll let you go ahead. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. Just off. just the one thing I I just I I because the way this sounds when you put us employees and you put us in that group that that's circumventing the council the council if the council hears that more dominic's up there talking at the bar about a you know a private matter you know that should not be discussed then if you hear about it then of course you would call sheila or call the mayor or call the council and the council determines whether we were we go or not you know and that kind of thing so I don't want any of the boards and commission stuff mentioned in this. Because we're, nobody can. The only people who could retaliate against us for whistleblowing be the city council and they have the right to tell us any day hit the road, you know, so we don't need to be a part of that. I think what this policy is really intended to do is to encourage people to come forward with information that hey city's doing something wrong mm -hmm. lawyers doing something wrong we want to encourage people to come forward um you know we get into anti-harassment or anti-retaliation in the next section right. which i think is where you're kind of going i mean this this section is really intended for hey mm -hmm. we want we encourage you to come forward if there's something going mm -hmm. on that shouldn't be going on by the city, mm -hmm. not by. Right, and we have we have all those abilities to do that. I mean, right. I, yeah, there's yeah, just no have... place in policies and procedures for boards and commissions. I mean, there's just I not. We're not. Feel. We are not subject to the personnel policies and procedures. We're and I, I don't mean. I don't mean yeah. like. You know, like I'm going to work right. doing stupid things, you know, but I, well, we're, I'm we're not saying yes, that. bring it forward. So I don't yeah. know how everyone else feels about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, it, yeah, and I don't I, and I, of course, want everybody else to talk. But if if that is if that's something you're going to keep, then I'm going to have to discuss that with the council because I, I, I just can't agree to have that in there. I don't know what anybody else thinks. And maybe maybe, you know, I don't know, can somebody in the city manager's office or something? Can you explain? I mean, it kind of again goes back to we get into this whistleblower thing, but I'm like, protections for what now? Like, not, has that been lifted out of some other the code or the, the charter or something like no, that? No, it's not in the charter. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not positive, but I, I um, you can correct me, mm -hmm. but I only with employees. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're not. 
just, I mean, I'm not, it sounds like I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't like this. That's not the point. We're not covered by these policies and procedures. So there should be no reference to boards and commissions. That'd be great. We, we want paid holidays if we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want a lot of things. I want insurance. Uh, so yeah, I just, I, if, if we're going to keep that, just please let me know so that I can consult with council about that. Cause I, I, that will be something I can't, can't yeah, I can't. Uh, I think the intent of this is if you serve on a board or commission, we we we're encouraging if you see something to report it. So some people, because they've been appointed by the council, may not feel comfortable. But under whistleblower protection, we're saying please do come forward. Like don't you're not excluded from whistleblowing we want you to be included in whistleblowing right and i, and I understand the intent okay. i do i get it and but i think that that is something that the council should convey to us as we sign up for boards and i'm just talking about us all the boards and commissions you know what i mean um i'm not i'm not disagreeing i mean yeah but i think most of us feel comfortable say like if i see something's going wrong i am going to have a discussion but my person that i answer to is the council so I would take it to the council. So I just, and what if it was that? the council that yeah. you were, I mean, would you still take it to the council? Mm -hmm. That's, I guess that's no, that I would take it to the city attorney. So I mean, what we could do is maybe not include it in definitions, but then include it somewhere that we, I don't, encourage. I, I will, I, I, I just, I, I would, I will, I can't support anything that references what these rules apply that I get that you're helping us. I, I get that. Yeah, but you can put that in the packet that you give to new people who are put on boards, you know, to say you you absolutely have the right to report something if you see it, mm. but not here. I, 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 that's, that for me is a no go. So you just let me know if that's something you guys want to keep. I, and again, I understand you're trying to, to help us. Gotcha. The boards and commissions, <laughs> us, we do have our own, uh, because I, I, we sign all that paperwork when we start. Yeah, we yeah, but we do have a a, a uh, somewhat uh, a policy ourselves that we are governed to be on this uh, particular board or any board and commissions. Because I re I distinctly remember that there's a uh, a list of well, not really a list, but you have to uh, comply with certain things it's not many really that i remember one right. your taxes and all that kind of crap right, you're right. Yeah, gotta be, be done, done. Yeah. so that's where our uh direction guidance, comes from yeah our guidance and our just stipulations come from on uh being in a position or or qualifying for the position of personnel board or any other board because they all have they're not mm -hmm. all the same okay right uh but they're that's where it, it really is it's in our application of uh, re requesting the position that we're uh, currently in. Got it. And they're all different, trust me. Okay, the, right, uh, right. And maybe that needs to be beefed up, you okay. know, like, okay. so. Okay, so um, next point kind of goes to what Chris was saying. The part about, um, first of all, the phrase violates the public's trust is so vague. I don't, I don't even really know how to, to, I don't know how you quantify that. But then again, and then the next part where it says need not be within the scope of the employees and the employees uh, duties to be subject to a claim of and somehow we need to do. Do we have a definition for improper government action? And that's all part of that's proper. the whole thing it means any action by a city employee and appointed member of board, commission or committee. Well, or an elected official. Oh, says. oh, sorry, sorry. You're right. You're right. I, I saw capitalized and when I see capitalized, I go back to the definition list, which I know wasn't on there, but no, I'm, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that disregard that piece of it, but um, this 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 concept of in the public. So, like when I just my example is when I worked at Johnson County Medic on the ambulance over there, um, we had a, our requirements at the time were if you want to post a picture on Facebook of out you know you're out drinking and doing something ridiculous or just even God old God knows what, if you got on a medic uniform. That was disciplined up to and including termination. If that was out there, if you had on a uniform, and or there was something to associate you with medac. Now, I'm not saying that this is what we should have to do, but like on Facebook, we all took out where we worked. I mean, I don't post pictures of doing stupid 
stuff, you know, but we had people that would do things like that. So it's like, do not have anything in here that associates yourself with MedAct if you're mm -hmm. going to put that stuff policies. up or you'll be. We have policies like that. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, so I don't, I don't understand, but you have like, you have to be careful with this concept of, you know, Chris is doing something at the bar. He's not dressed as a firefighter. He has nothing on to indicate who he is as his time off, on his day off, his private oh, life. He actually does have rules that regulate that in there. But, in there. But, yeah, but I, I, I know what you're no, trying I to say. Letter, letter law. I, you know, my, my question is, one of my questions I would have is, if something is not within the scope of the employee's duties, how is that determined or how's that kind of governmental that policy? action? Yeah. If it falls outside of my duties, how is that? how does that fall under governmental action? I see what you're saying. Well, it may or may not. That's, I mean. But, but the, you know, the public doesn't know. I mean, it, the, again, is, is it, are we looking, is this a, is this a policy for the employees that stays within the scope of when we are working and, and <laughs> working, or does this fall outside of when I'm in the public on my day off? Any sense? Yeah, and that's the part, right? yeah. Question. And that's like, and that's a good point that you say that it actually need not be within the scope of the employees, uh, you know, whatever. Well, then it's if it's not in your employee thing when you're you're acting as an employee on duty and whatever, then it's not a governmental uh, improper governmental action because when you're in public, you're not. You know, and not on duty, you're not subject to the expectation of employees' content. You know that 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 can be extremely vague. You know. That mean that any segment of the public might take offense to an off-duty conduct act activity that's considered improper governmental action, which goes back to the nebulous violates the public's trust. There you go. What is that? Yeah. I think we trying to think of some situations that I've been in, like, for example, city, not here, yeah, <laughs> but in, in one of the cities I represent, city clerk was embezzling money taking money yeah. and those types of things yeah we i think we can say hands down yeah I mean, that's very clear um oh yeah that that i mean that's on the job and you're <laughs> violating yeah. your job i mean that's not that's right. not the public's trust or anything like that that's a violation right. of your job on duty well on duty but she also had like city credit cards so off duty she was backing up credit card charges she was doing other things sure so I mean, I get where you're saying, and I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm right. agreeing that okay, we got to figure out how to maybe narrow this down. Right, and that's what that's what like is. Let's look at the, let's yeah, let's look we, into that a little bit more. The and, intent is really to hey, we want everyone. We just want you to feel comfortable. Come, tell us what's going on, and we're going to protect you. That's really what this right. section is really about. So we just we want to be broad, but we want to be narrow, and we want to you know. So I, I get what you're. Well, and if somebody said, you know, oh, we saw we saw Chris out, you know, Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, oh okay, thank you. I mean, <laughs> right, right, right. I, it might be you, but, but right. I always, when I think in terms of this, I think about who's who's sitting next in the seat, you know. You well, know who I am. Well, I know, but no, also I, the premise of, the premise yes, of the, I mean, polite, anybody yeah. can say anything at Absolutely. any time. I mean, you can Absolutely. see well, the I, stuff that comes across I'm my desk. I mean, the was, well, 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 so, well, I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't mean we're going to take action. All this says is that we want people to feel comfortable coming forward. We want to create that culture. Now, how we investigate it, how we, depending on what, what kind of, it may be personnel, it may be financial, it may be, I mean, who knows, right? All this is, and maybe we can reward it a little yeah, bit, okay. but this, this, all this does is says, we want people, we want to create the culture for people, so people feel comfortable bringing things forward. Everything that gets brought forward is not going to be credible, mm -hmm. or it's not going to be investigative mm -hmm. right, right. level. And I think, too, that's what And it's not now. I mean, right. there's right. lots of things that get brought to our attention. That and you're like, like, okay, like you said, okay, thank, thank you, you for notifying. <laughs> yeah. And I think that'll help too if like like again back at the top where you this is the whistleblower, just as whistleblower, yeah. maybe it's a whistleblower 
you know, policy. Right. So maybe this is wording. Wording. Right. Tell now me what we're doing up concerned. here okay. so that I don't get down here and go, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, I think you understand what I'm saying. Did you have? Yeah. If I may, if I may, uh, I'm hoping that if it's job connected will be a key word. If it's off duty conduct that is not job connected, then that should not be a part of this. But if it's on duty or job connected, or you can track back and say, well, this has some connection to it, to the job. I have a, or the person holding themselves out as a city employee yeah. while they're doing something wrong. Right. But that, that should be the, but to just allow them to be open to a public complaint of off-duty conduct. I well, think. we do have employees that are, that are subject to off-duty conduct. There are, there are certain. Well, in our policy, we do hold city employees and uh, city officials at a higher standard of, 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 of conduct than uh, of, is, is, it's, I guess it should be, it's unsaid. Uh, Cause I'll, I'll say it this way. Let's say if someone is out and they want to flex their uh, position. First thing they say, I'm on the city council, but he's a drunk stupor in the corner or, you know, trying to flex himself. Or I'm on the, I'm a fireman. Oh, come on, dude. Okay, what are, in those scenarios, what, this doesn't apply? Or, or I have some kind That's of- That's off work. Yeah. Well, but he's now identified himself as a he's firefighter, so now you're going to start getting into issues. They're holding themselves out. I had a. But, I mean, but I don't think but that's in a perfect world that don't action. happen. But in this world, those scenarios occur all the time. I well, mean, I they really do. Right. Side. So and how do we? Somebody reports that, and it's a some kind of felony. I mean, wouldn't it, it has nothing to do with my job? But I'm I'm committing a felony over here. I mean. Well, yeah, breaking the breaking the law to me yeah. is this is more like a this is breach the of trust. Is a, yeah, you know what I mean. This, I mean, if you're doing something illegal, oh yeah, that's coming. You know, and and I don't know where like um, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll I'll stop. Did you have something? If, if, if they broke the law, that that would come to the city through some kind of a filing, you know, somebody would have done something. The police would have written a report. Some law enforcement agency would have taken it up. Uh, but yeah. if it's not, I, mean, I think there's a standard that employees cannot be disciplined for off-duty conduct unless the employer can prove the conduct negatively, in, negatively impacts the employee's ability to perform his or her or the employer's ability to carry out the functions. So I think what the concern is, is that being exposed for any off-duty conduct to be declared improper government action is too much. But if it's connected to the job, then it, it, I think it, it would be in the city's interest to deal with it. If it's job related. And so, and, you know, if you're saying I'm pulling myself out of the public works or whatever and creating a problem, I, I had to jerk a person away from the bar one time that said, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to bring enforcement. They got an argument or something, I'm going to bring enforcement down. The person was off duty. And I'm jerking them off out and getting everything calmed down because <laughs> that should not have happened. They shouldn't have said that. But and that, could, that was him. Yeah. That, and that was job related. So that's that's all I'm pleading for is that it be job related and that, that the employees are not exposed on their, uh, to this on their off duty conduct. And, and if, no, they're, if they're violating the law, you guys are yeah. going to. That's, that's not the intent. And if it were to yeah. come up that, hey, you know, you were drinking, but it was off duty and you weren't, you know. Right. Then you I, can. Then you would say, the thanks, box. Just to me. Yeah. So yeah. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. See, you but wouldn't if, raise but it. But if he gets a DUI, he has to go declare that to the to the department. Right. To the, the, the city yeah. Yeah. Sure. Again, I can't. I can't. We that. hear what you guys are saying. And I think there's a way that we, that we yeah, can reword this that still offers the culture that we're trying to create. Yeah. And yep. yeah, I okay. agree. Okay, um, so section C on there, where it starts the, just the definition of retaliation and stuff. Yeah. We have a whole nother retail. Like I think we should just have all the retaliation stuff in the anti-retaliation or retaliation thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll we'll look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, that's not a significant discussion. Nope. Um, and then uh, reporting procedures two A there. Um, 
Yeah, to invoke the protections, employees shall make a written report <coughs> to the chief human resources officer. Again, can we make that so that maybe it does have to come directly to you? I don't like what if don't take this the wrong way. What if it's the complaint is with you and so right. it they should be able to give it to somebody else. You know what I'm talking about. That's I'll leave it out there. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. That. Okay, section B there. I just it start it starts with if and I like the comma there between the if and the then part. So just make a note on that as comma thing in there. Not a big deal. Where's that? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I went fast. Um, two B. Okay. If the this this and the other shall notify in uh, shall concludes that there's an improper action has been taken has taken place comma this happens I just put a oh. comma there that's just minor doesn't change anything it's grammatical grammatical thing gra gr yes grammatical I can't say the word you know what I mean <laughs> grammatical <laughs> grammatical thank you um, then uh, section D on the top D and E. Um, I don't think these sections should be under reporting procedures. Because, um, you know, we're coming along, we're coming along, we're talking about reporting procedures. I wish I would have said where I think it should go, but I don't think it goes there. We just make a note of that, please, and just see if, like, does it follow if that goes somewhere else? So the flow, you like yeah. what it says, it's just the yeah, flow. Yeah, like, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and because then that E says it, you know, the retaliation against them. It's like, well, we got the retaliation thing coming. So, right. which yeah. maybe, I don't know why I did this. I just said, maybe this is where we start the whole retaliation thing. You understand what I'm saying there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the following remedies. So section four, the following okay. remedies. Can I back up one sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. Under protections, to the extent allowed by law, the identity of the employee reporting information about improper governmental action shall be kept confidential unless the employee waives confidentiality in writing. Um, just speaking on our terms, if it's if it's a member being disciplined and the union is representing that member, pulling that witness information might make it challenging for us in, in, in representing that member. Oh, that's interesting. That's a union. Even waive. if they waive it, if they if they waive it, if they don't waive it, if they don't waive it. Oh, okay. So you know, that that thing unless, unless that person waives it. Is that a policy though that you have or is it well we or, or does it do you we represent our members in any discipline action? Okay. For our contract. I gotcha. And so your concern there is if 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 I have a member that's being disciplined, somebody brought him, you know, came to you, there was an issue, um they brought it to your attention. And yeah, I'm disciplined this member. Not knowing what the details around that witness or or what that entails to be able to represent my member appropriately. So he's right, not, and I don't yeah. think that's an issue. I I guess I I think it's just saying we're going to try and keep this as confidential unless mm -hmm. um, the employee waves it. But I see. I I guess I don't. It's if they're coming to you saying I need you to represent me in this. Right. Yeah. So we, we don't have it for, because yeah. I mean they have the right to know who their accuser is. Is what I'm basically saying. Oh, I got right. you. Okay. So if it's a okay, got it. Um, yeah, because the employee who's being disciplined can weigh what he's yeah. doing, but then the employee in this case might be the whistleblower. Yeah, and like yeah. that's where well, whistleblower whole protection has different protections. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the thing. That's a different so thing. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, that's, that's the whole point of a yeah. whistleblower policy is right. that they have different right. than just uh, somebody says a, that there's harassment going on, and then we do an investigation. This is whistleblowing only, and there are protections by law that yeah. whistleblowers have right, yeah, that are right, different right. than. But if, 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 again, so if, if I have a member that is, is, is accused of doing something wrong by somebody, and then they're brought up on those discipline charges, and then we have to follow policy and procedures on, on how to discipline, and then I'm representing that member. Is that member entitled to that information from his accuser? Well, the, inv the investigation and the, the circumstances around, of course, and uh, the union would probably be involved in that anyway. Right, but right. the That's actual person who brought the whistleblowing incident forward would not be disclosed. I mean, that that whistleblower is protected mm -hmm. yeah. by this. That's the whole point of a whistleblower 
but again, if it's substantiated, I mean, then then yes, the whole the whole. If there's an investigation, I mean, we're not talking about everything either. We're talking about improper governmental actions, and so this is where that definition maybe yeah. we can tighten it up. Right. A and that bit. might be add some clarity to this point. It too, might add so. some clarity because yes, I believe the whistleblower would be protected. I mean, that's the whole idea here. Yeah. Well, and I have just an in general question with what you're saying, because I don't think I don't think from the union side of like, how could that get whatever this the, all goes to labor management too, or the coalition or whatever to be reviewed. Is that part of this whole thing? Because I don't think I don't think like, oh, that might be a specific issue for a union. To yeah, under I mean, we have a contract agreement, you know, it's in our it's in our contract agreement with the city that all uh, that will review and discuss any revisions to potential revisions to the city or departmental policy and work rules. So. So you're saying it, sh it need this has to go through labor well, management? We would, we, I mean, we would discuss it in labor management for a contract. Okay. Yeah, so. Which might extend our time. Mm -hmm. like well, but they, I mean, when it's publicly posted, I mean, you have every here, right to go yeah. and talk to the yeah. labor commission. I mean, the, yeah, yeah, and I don't the know labor coalition can talk right. about it and bring. And we'll, yeah, and I will discuss that with labor management in yeah. our next meeting. Yeah, so. you guys, yeah, I just, yeah, I uh, just think, yeah, like, I don't know what the answer is, and I don't necessarily need to. OK, uh, let's we'll see under remedies. Number four, I said the following remedies may be available to employees subjected to adverse actions for reporting. Um, OK, D disregard that. That doesn't make sense anymore. Sorry, I <laughs> write things down in the mic. Nope, yeah, well, that's that's a gone one. Um, OK, so then on five and six again, is I think like this is part of the retaliation thing. So I think five and six, like get all the retaliation under one section. And and it says also too by way of illustration, and then you have those those like those yes. three things there. Yeah. We already say in the first paragraph somewhere else, we already have suggestions. So but I don't care. I mean leave them there, take them out. But well and then that's all she wrote for that. For me. Thank you, guys. Okay. I'm done with article two. Your turn. And I assume this uh, this whole thing that this will be updated and yeah. reflected. Yeah. 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 I mean, just, just, yeah, yeah. Just, just one other quick thing. Okay. Just, put it, put it. Talk about the disability and so forth. I think we ought to maybe have some wording in here where we try to encourage people who are qualified. Who may have a physical disability to apply for jobs with the city. Yeah, and uh, and I, you know, there's a lot of businesses that have done this. Uh, but I think that comes under the affirmative action policy. Yeah. Well, I don't know. What I don't think that's at, a policy. We're talking about disability accommodation, and it seems to me that we should have some wording in there. He wanted to be or more. You you would like the wording to be more. Inclusive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but I think that comes. That's that's the hiring process. That like the city, you know, when you put out. Well, are we going to get into is, at some point? But in I don't. Process or? Well, I just don't think that belongs in policies and proceed. Most of now policies question? and proceed. I'm sorry. He was, He's suggesting that that you encourage people to apply or if have an ADA issue because we can accommodate you. But that mm -hmm. is all. Like if you look at all the jobs on the website, it says that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, no, but I, mean, you know, I, th I think there's an affirmative right. action versus we can accommodate. There's a positive way of looking at it and a negative way. Uh, we'll work around you if if you've got this autism or whatever. Uh, right. I just think we, you know, there's a lot of businesses that do this. If anybody watched the last uh, last program, Undercover Boss, <laughs> I don't know. I watched that all the time. Yeah, that's a good show. I think it's a great show yeah. for yeah. HR people. And you know, one business, one business not in our area, made a made a big deal about that. You know, we have this entire fast food business, and we have people who are blindly with autism, and that was quite an impression because I've never really seen that before. Right. And yeah, and I know, think that's good. I just don't think it has anything to do with policy. Yeah. Well, I don't. Know. You know, I mean, that's in the, well, how the city advertises right. itself, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and yeah, friend, we need to move on. Right, if we're at the end of this section, uh, um, I've got stuff that I didn't get to. Can, can I? Go ahead. All right. Um, sorry to interrupt. You're the guy. Um, 
<laughs> so we're running. We got, I don't know. 20, uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. I don't know how much this discussion will require, but in Article 5, there's a, an amendment for Juneteenth for Salt City holidays. Um, yeah. And I know that's probably one of the more timely things we need to address. Uh, yep. Because we, we got to get that done before June. So, yeah. Yeah. so with, with the meeting getting close to the adjournment mm -hmm. time and us needing to plan for this, if, if the if the board would consider taking this this item up next, I yes. would be appreciated. Yes. Okay. The only thing mm -hmm. I have on that is just a broad question. I just want to make sure that this applies to every single employee. Now I understand, like you don't if you don't you don't get any holidays, then of course you don't get any holidays. But if you get holidays, you're gonna get those. I just want to make sure that this is so treated just like Christmas and all the other national holidays. I just want to make sure there's nobody's going to be excluded. Yeah. yeah okay. Just yeah. So I mean, obviously, no, you me, don't me, get holidays if you so, never get a holiday. So let me address that. So, okay. um, um, employees that get holidays, this will be added to their holiday. But okay. as has been pointed out by Mr. Fairbanks over there, they do have many of these of our employees have separate work agreements that specify holidays. Okay. So those agreements would uh, need to be changed through. Okay bargaining the next time those agreements are up for consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I understand what you're saying. Yeah, we we have to follow the contracts right. that we enter with those labor. But can you guys do something in the interim? Because I, like I said, we have to renegotiate those agreements with each mm -hmm. with each of the seven bargaining units that don't reference the city's personnel I, policies and procedures. And I understand that yeah. completely, but what that could like what I'm thinking is, is I don't know. I think your contract's maybe five. What's yours, Chad? Three. So, the, and for what it's worth, and Chad, I hope you don't. Are you okay with me talking about this? I'll be glad to. Be good. Okay. Uh, so this was brought up during uh, a recent negotiation with uh, IBW 53, and we we tried to reference the personnel policies and procedures in the contract, and I, I understand the union's position. They did not want to do that, and we were clear that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we didn't want to work. I didn't you didn't want to. You didn't want us to reference the personnel policies and procedures when it came to vacations in your work agreement. And holidays. And, right. and holidays. We wanted yeah. to leave it in our contract. We you, the, the proposal was. I'm sorry, I won't talk over you, but that proposal, yeah. as I recall, was to remove the language from the contract because it's and didn't reference <laughs> the policies and procedures. Cor correct. Yeah. So Chad's saying that exactly right. So we were. Uh, so you offered that and you yes. said you would have taken that? Our correct. proposal was to add the Juneteenth holiday. And at the time, uh, that was not something to be discussed. So that we we were explicit that mm -hmm. they may be something if it gets changed, then they're going to that's something they're going to have to, you know, live with for a or period of time. So mm. um, so not to get into a whole union negotiation here, but there's two mechanisms here is one, the contracts stay as they are, or if the unions want to come approach us, to renegotiate right. that. That's always something they can do. But we absolutely have so to they follow could do the work. Like if, if their contract, I'm just going to throw some out. I think Chad's contract is three years. So if he's like, okay, Depends you guys are going to approve one, this yeah. and we, you know, we check off that we're going to add Juneteenth. Juneteenth. He has three contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I'm sorry, IBW's contract. Yeah. Um, so if the, that's two years or whatever it is, he, without opening up all negotiations, can they just come to you and say, we know that the per this is all passed all the way up to the chart, you know, city councils checked it off. Can we discuss with you getting this added to our contract or do they have to wait three years? Is what I'm asking um, as an example. I mean, we're, we're obligated to, if you know, they approach us, we approach them. I mean, it's uh, in good form uh, to, you know, discuss those things. Yeah, so I mean, okay. we, you know, we, we modify, you know, Things with IFF periodically, their their work okay. rules and you know their different policies that get okay. adopted through through their process. So there's a couple mechanisms, but again, in some cases we were explicit about what we were trying to do, and um, there was you know a sounds like there was confusion. I don't think there was confusion. It was just uh, at different positions on it. There's no confusion, um, just different positions. So, um, okay. like you asked the question, I'm just telling you, some work agreements have have this in okay. there, some don't, and there's an avenue for them to pursue. It's up to us whether we would do that or not. Um, 
So there you go. Okay. And Madam Chair. Uh, can I can I can I let Chad answer to that because of being the union I, thing? And again, then we could... I, I would hesitate to get into a whole. Um, uh, yeah, I would just like to have a his... union negotiation. No, that. I'm I'm asking yeah. I'm asking a question. He, I want him to be able to re yeah. to discuss. I just, want to, I just want to make clear that I mean, if, 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 if the city stands, that they're not going to provide it it's automatically for everybody, even. Just repeat that, please. How do you mean? I just want to make sure that the city stance is clear that adding this to the policies and procedures, they're not just generally giving it to all the bargaining units. I can address that. Real deal. And because there is a section two that refers to their agreements are addenda, right. addenda. I can never remember which way to use that. Their agreements take precedent over the personnel policy and procedures. If there's a conflict, mm -hmm. right? Um, now, okay. Let me just let me say let me explain why I'm asking this question. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's the union's job to figure out how that gets fixed. Mm -hmm. I would be very nervous about. This the nature of Juneteenth being that we don't offer this across the board and agree that we're going to make whatever changes you, however you guys do that, because I don't think it would be a good look. Also, not good to violate work agreements. But yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I agree. Like you, I think if there's an issue, you guys need to. I hope everybody agrees to try to get that done by Juneteenth, so that well, we don't have the perception that we are. Juneteenth is a very popular thing, you know. You you understand what I'm saying? It's a historical. Well, it's not popular. It's a historical. No, yeah, it is a popular. Right. Okay. It's a historical, and it's now a federal holiday. It's a, that's, is, the, that's the point. Population popular. Okay. It's a okay. historical federal holiday now. Mm -hmm. It's recognized by the whole by the right. whole country. Yeah. But if their work agreement doesn't say that, then those guys aren't going to get it. Okay. I like I said, there's I, avenues for that. Too. There's, okay. just, yeah, yeah. Thank you for saving me. Yeah, they, want to say. yeah. they have a, a, a procedure. Oh, we, to know, we, we have already went down that right. procedure. We yeah. proposed it. So. Right. So there's not an issue with that, is it? Because they got a way to rectify, correct, whatever they want to do. So if any changes to work agreement, there's yeah. a process for that to occur. Right. So we don't have an issue with that because it's not. No, I was just asking to make sure that that, that everybody, I hope every, I'm saying that I hope everybody on both sides of negotiations are willing to get this all accomplished and fixed so that every employee that is entitled to holidays, some people aren't. It's a part time. So there are a lot of yeah. dynamics and complexity mm -hmm. to go into negotiating these work agreements. Well, yeah, that's all yeah. I, I, I just got a comment on this. <clears throat> you know, I don't know what the, the holiday cost, but I'm I'm figuring roughly. Two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, roughly. I don't know. Uh, I think every extra dollar that we have, the city, in view of the financial circumstances of the city, mm -hmm. should go into employee paychecks, and we should not be having more days off. But I agree with Carl that this particular holiday is a very important one. So. What I say is, let's take this money that we would spend on the 13th holiday, give it to the employees and their paycheck, okay? And go and look at this holiday list and say, President's Day, what are we doing? What are we celebrating on President's Day? Donald Trump or Joe Biden or whatever? How, how relevant is that to us? And say, okay, we're going to look at Juneteenth, a combo day. Alternate years, we celebrate Juneteenth. And the other two years, congressional elections and presidential elections, we're going to have voting day. And that's in keeping with the John Lewis uh, election bill in front of Congress plus one other. So let's have that 12th holiday be a combination. And how better can you honor the folks uh, who gained their emancipation? In Texas, on Juneteenth, than to have sure. day off for voting uh, for federal elections, and it just seems to me that that'd be a win-win situation. Employees could get more money in their paycheck. We wouldn't have another unproductive day uh, off, and we could get rid of something like President's Day, which has no meaning at all, other than if you want to buy a mat mattress. 
at the Nebraska <laughs> Party. And, and so, so, I mean, you know, what do we do to celebrate that? I don't know. Go to the casino or what? So, so, so spend money for the employee and, and let, let's have this holiday celebrating what we want. So that's all I want. So. I just have one question I'd like to ask. It's really so if, if the if if it won't be provided to all employees, what will will they be working that day then without management supervision? Because they're not covered by the collective bargaining agreement. So will, will that, will that be the Are you speaking of uh city employees or contracted city, employees? Both. I mean the contracted well, employees are city employees. So if the people that are covered, so for instance. I'm just going to use this fellow here. Luke is a, he's a meter reader. He was a city employee and he's covered by a collective bargaining agreement. Okay. Okay. So he is, he, according to this, he'll have to work that day. But his supervisor will not because he is his management. He'll get, he'll get off because he's only guided by the policies and procedures. So then we'll be working without management on, on those days. Would that be the idea? <sighs> I, I think it is confusing, but I, I, I think that I think where we need to leave it at 10 yeah. to 12, maybe that is that I think you guys have to work with them on that. So like, I don't with, think we can clear this up. With all due respect, I mean, we, we have a process. We can work through those things. Good. We, we have uh, and whether they're, you know, adopted or not, or we, we agree to it is not we will remain to be seen, but we have seven of those, I think question would be is this all those other logistics those things we work through all the time from a management perspective yeah yeah okay. the rest of the policy so um i mean, I mean all you're the, doing is that the, the question mr mcgregor raised that's those are those are items that we work through all the time okay, okay. so i guess the question would be really fundamentally what is this going to be I recommended for adoption or not I guess. or if there's more work I don't what have we any. need to do to research this or come back with different options. Well, how much is the cost, Adam? I mean, oh, you, you don't have off the top of your head. That. Did, and I don't um, remember. If you're thinking of a thousand FTEs, average right. wage of 25 bucks an hour, not counting the overtime to staff the fire departments and the police departments yeah. and the utilities, you know, I can see it maybe 300,000. That's a lot of money for it. The yeah. town doesn't have a lot of money in the, in the general fund. Uh, well, no, we don't. Um, yeah, you know. Bush wants to say something. I, I don't understand the, the problem here. Because the work agreement, the work agreements and bargaining units recognized by the city will be considered an addendum to these policy procedures. If a conflict exists between any agreement and the policy procedures, the agreement will prevail. However, if there's no conflict, the policy procedures will prevail. The, you, that extra contract benefit of that Juneteenth is it does not need to be negotiated. It can be folded in at the next regular negotiation, but nothing mandates open up the contract mm -hmm. for you got you adopting an extra contract benefit. I, so I don't understand why no. we're having this this dialogue over this. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, I, and, I, and then I have I other points that I didn't get to cover on what we've already <laughs> covered when you get when you want to allow me. You know, I should have jumped in earlier. Man. <laughs> but I think I I did not know of that phrase, hadn't thought of that part of it. I agree. I think we know what's going on. Union labor and everybody's going to have to work with you guys and get that figured out. Yeah. So. <clears throat> okay. So it accrues to them without any change in their contracts if you guys. Okay. Yeah, and that's what you guys will yeah, can present to this. them. In a labor management meeting, I guess. And present it to the board. I mean, to the uh, council. Are we ready office. to say yes to do? Sure. Well, we're we have we can't make a recommendation today. No, but is there any other discussion? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't. Will you bring back the cost figures and kind of like? Yeah, I was out? trying to pull that. I I have them somewhere because um, I you know, we're doing this. You just can't. Could you make a note? The the when we talked last time. I'm oh, sorry. This is just off the link, but the personnel policies and procedures that are online. We don't have that. Uh, anybody hired after July 1st, 2019 doesn't get whatever. I just think we need that link needs to be updated. It's Where not, is the link? I went and looked at that. You know what? I I only found it by typing in City of Independence personnel policies and procedures. Like I could not link my way through that to find it. Okay. But if we could just 
just don't or maybe the link just needs to go away. I don't know. Don't okay. you think that big fat book that they gave us, a big white covered book? Uh, no, I didn't get a white covered book. Or yeah. But but don't we talked in the last thing? meeting that we need I to do. rely on the one that's online. I went to look time. online. It's just that one change we've had in the last what however many years. But again, well, I could not <laughs> link my way through the site. I, I had to off. search it, which may <laughs> mean. You know what I mean? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, if things yep. are changing as they are, just yep. gotcha. Are we any other discussion about Juneteenth? I, I'm, I'm not hearing very well. Is there any other discussion about Juneteenth? So well, he's going to bring back maybe some data for the hopefully next meeting. Well, we're getting. I mean, we're only in February place. now, I guess. Are we going to? I get. Uh, Teresa, are you uh, holding a? Uh, a, a a vote on acceptance of the Juneteenth. Uh, well, and I think Ron is saying. Ron is saying. Public hearing. Ron is saying. Yeah, all our meetings are public hearings. Move forward with that if you want. Say it again. All of our meetings are public meetings. They're not yeah. public hearings. No, but anybody. We posted it as that though, because remember mean, really? we did, had that conversation at the beginning. We did post it as a public hearing and did the ten days and. And actually, okay, a so lot that's of why you did the tendency. Like I was like, that's only when we're getting to the point. Yeah. Of, okay. And now we've had so many changes that. No. I. I yeah. I agree. Yeah. But I maybe we can make a recommendation. I don't. Is it on the agenda that we can make the recommendation to move forward on the? Well, I think Ron is waiting for some financial data. Okay. So we'll, we'll have to take that up yeah, at the next gonna, meeting. I don't. This is normal what we're talking. We, we can bring it to you guys. And if we think maybe there's a concern that we're running out of time, we could call a special, we could have another meeting like, you know, you know three weeks from now. But I think we ought to really consider well, we're meeting four weeks from now, so. <laughs> right, I, know, I just didn't know if it right. hurts getting it on the calendar and getting it to the council. Right. I mean, I think we've talked. I think, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. We'll give him the last few minutes if we're not. Well, I just want to make, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I just want to make it clear that we're that. going to bring Juneteenth back at our next meeting. So, as well as the revisions to Article One that we discussed, the new Article One. Yes, Article One. Right. Right. Yeah. So we'll continue that public hearing. Excellent. All right. And isn't that required to click right at twelve? Or no. And you still want us to do the ten day like we did, or do we not want to do? Uh, I'm a I, little unclear as to that, but I then that's why I was unclear at first because I, I was like, like it's better the, to be safe than sorry. And people yeah, did. I had lots of employees who asked questions, wanted some clarity, yeah. um, said thank you for you know notifying. Yeah. Well, thank you yeah. for updating our policies and working on. I mean, there. So we had a number of people that gave feedback. Or and and, and I, I kind of see the point that like maybe if we had come to a conclusion on this, we could have made a motion to recommend that piece. So. If we continue to follow that, I mean, then we're covered. And if we don't come to a conclusion on something, we don't, you know. But um, two, if we could get, if you're sending it out two weeks in advance, if we can get it two weeks in advance when it goes out to them, that would that would help us too, you know. If it's going out to to the employees, we'd like to know what the employees are getting as the personnel. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we had talked about that at one of the meetings and just said, you know, we. It, it's rough to do this turnaround so quickly. I think in this mm -hmm. case it's a little bit easier, but we were. Mm -hmm. you that's why I was surprised you guys got it out. It's, but we we didn't have a meeting in yeah, January. But, yeah. but then that's yeah. when you January. said if we could yeah, at least get to the board the Tuesday before the Friday meeting. Yeah. And I get where you're going. I just, mm -hmm. like I said, we made changes in between when we sure. originally posted and then what you're reviewing today. Right. And so it just. I don't think know, we like keep sending out packet after packet after packet. Right, but it is kind of no, I just that. have a. I understand what you're saying. And I yeah. totally agree. Do, but is there a requirement that when there's a public hearing that involves us, that not only are the employees have to be notified ten days in advance, we do. If it's not, if it doesn't say that, then I'm fucking. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Say that. Uh -uh. It does yeah, not. It doesn't okay. say that. It just says it has to go out to the employees. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. Then we're following the rules. That's it's publicly posted. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I had withheld. I hope you'd indulge me. Uh, originally, I didn't get the change one. I knew that the at will employment had been contemplated but removed from being presented today, which uh, I just wanted to point out that 
this charter does create a uh, merit system and due process. Now, with that, uh, with with this removed, does that mean there will be no changes in Article uh, Seven and Eight regarding uh, discipline and termination? Well, if that due process, do we still have the due process and termination and, and discipline? That does not change. Well, because but, see, it transfer if one change here can transfer other mm -hmm. in other places because we have in harassment we have the word immediate termination on uh, I think it's has that changed? Yeah. I <laughs> Article two H one harassment. Uh, the number one, about uh, sixty percent down. It says uh, whether at work or outside of work is grounds for immediate termination. Now the does somebody here contemplate that we're going to remove due process? And, or the step process and discipline later in the uh, policy procedure? No, no, and that you would be, oh, okay. there's a 10 day suspension without pay pending termination. So, so everybody would get that so regardless if it's immediate. You can't execute immediate termination. Well, it says you're subject to, I mean, that's just one of those grounds that, hey, it's this is grounds for it. It's grounds for it. Well, but maybe you would have not the wording. But we don't have a standard of, we have immediate suspension for 10 days pen, pending termination, mm -hmm. but we don't have in, in, the, in the policies at this point, uh, an immediate termination standard. Now you're suspended for 10 days immediately, and at the end of 10 days, if you haven't perfected your appeal, you're fired. If you've perfected your appeal, you come before the board, you know, because you have a due process right. And I'm wondering if, if we've totally vacated this concept of that will, and to honor the merit system, the public voted in effect and to protect the due process, or is this an indication that we have a later change that we'd like to see now of what's going to be what's going to affect the due process and the proprietary rights that the employees have for their jobs to at least have a fair hearing before they're gone? And I have can I can yeah. I, I I might have some suggested language that might help us um, would be subject to discipline up to and including termination. That's that grand that phrase. That would work. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's great that's enough. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I wanted to point out on. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's it. That is a very good point. New, Up to uh, including. New item C and I, new item. To me, it's new item C and D on page one. We have the term first uh, human resources department, and we have the term personnel director. Yet, if you look at 3.25 of the charter, 3.26 of the charter, and the preamble, there's no provision for human resources. I, all the other departments, I think, go by their department, department title that's in the charter, and I don't know why we would vacate the charter title, the charter title for uh, the term human resources. We've been using personnel. I think if the people want to change that, and I don't, when you look at the list of departments in the charter, <laughs> all the rest are still carrying their same name. This is the only one that I can see no. that's no, I don't. getting its name changed. And we talked about some of that because the charter directs a personnel director. We, d we don't actually have a personnel director. So we were going to put in the definitions, human resources means personnel department mm -hmm. as stated in charter. The chief HR officer, you know, yeah, if you have that clear, that's what we're doing in the definitions. But oh. um, I, don't, I, I, I would that would be cool if that was in here, I too. I don't think it comports with this guy. So, but and, uh, are you looking at page 21? Yes, sir. Section so three. Points. I don't see that personnel directors capitalized. So to me, it just says per when so, when it's not cap. I mean, yeah, I'm not a sure attorney, I, but I it's not capitalized. So that doesn't seem to me that. That's a definite title. I mean, there are certain that well, seems generic in nature to me. I don't I don't know. Wait, well, it's now of course I can't find it when I'm needing to find it. For instance, on, the, page, on page 20, on page. it actually says the park and rec department creates a director. There's no such reference to that in and for the health department, in fact, create a director of health, but for the personnel department, there is no such phrase that says create 
personnel director. I think if you look at 326, power, personnel director of powers and duties, it says the personnel director or the director. Yeah, the personnel director yeah, or the personnel under his or her supervision control shall. So I think it, it does specify personnel director, personnel department, and the preamble page B5, it's glitch department and then uh, uh, commissions. And all of we have a law, fire, police, electric utility, public works, uh, yeah, uh, parks, and rec, health, health, finance, and personnel, not human resources. So I think it was the intent of this charter to refer to that department as a personal department with a personal director. Now, I've said that for the record. You'll accept <laughs> you guys to do what you, what you will with that. I'm just, I, I think. And, it, I know there it, are questions that come up in the yeah. community well, yes. discussions about that. Like, why does it say we have to have this, but we don't know who that person is? So if maybe there is some clarification that uh, somewhere that, like you said, in the definition or something, the chief human resources officer is acting mm -hmm. in court, sure. you know, is the personnel director according to the suggestion. charter or something. Yeah. 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 And then somebody asked me, I can say there's a sentence that says it's a chief yeah. human resource officer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, under I, uh, page 514, complaint procedure, we have the administrative policy that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I. And I, for the record, this looks like a policy that applies to the personnel. It's, it's an employment policy. We had a city manager that would put these admin policies in to avoid coming to you guys and letting people argue whether or not, whether or whether recommended or not. That's these are one of them. And I would suggest that if you're going to have the a complaint procedure, you've got other procedures here, it should be incorporated. Now, I put that on the record. It's up to you guys to do if you want to do that. But I think it's improper not to have the procedure, the actual procedure in there, because you have other procedures. Um, uh, okay, 814. Uh, Page 8. 814. On the uh, ADA, if you look at T and U, T is a safety net that. Uh, oh, so that, that they can be still yeah, paid while we're figuring yeah, this accommodation until out. Until the determination of accommodation can be made. Now, if you had an on the job injury, you, you definitely want to let somebody waiting to see if they can get another job in the city be at least held as an employee, if not paid while they're suspended. <laughs> so I, I would plead that that's reinstated and uh, and I would plead that you I think it should be reinstated and you okay uh, the, these are okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. so I, I, I and when it, when it comes to accommodation there there's a balance is it an ex really a hardship on the city undoable or can we figure creatively ways to make it happen for the employee? I don't know that there's room in this language to do that at this point. You know, to to say this is our this is our policy or this is our goal to work as as diligent as we can with them to try as much as we can to find the solution, short of saying we can't do it. It's, uh, that's, I mean, like make every attempt to yeah. accommodate. Right. Blah blah blah. Okay, uh, we we say that in the policy, but uh, mm -hmm. yep. And now uh, the on religious accommodation, and that's uh, that's a new. Uh, I bet you got a different one. Page ten. Uh, page ten. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead. Item three, maybe is where it would go. I just yeah. the concept of the city be, would be held to a, a standard of this will not be unreasonably withheld. That there that somehow there's a. You, the city has to meet some standard of reasonability. Because they're, they're, we're seeing some games played with this religious, uh, I guess on both sides, but where people mm -hmm. really find ways to fight you on the religious uh, accommodation. And I think it, that it should not be unreasonably withheld. <clears throat> there's, 
I can't remember. Is that is that I can't remember if I looked up Sherm to see if that language followed that. You know, Jennifer, um, I. I because I looked, was, there's several of them I looked at, so. I think. I, I don't know. I think we're covered there. I think I understand what you're saying. Like right. we want to make every reasonable attempt or we want to, you know, work hard at it. But, and it says we'll evaluate considering whether work conflict exists due to a sincerely held belief. What I guess I, I would say there is is the immediate supervisor the one to judge whether it's a sincere religious belief. But it would appear that management can demonstrate the real reason why they can't do it and not because they have some problem with that religion. Or that it has to, it, it specifically says it has to have conflict with the operation of the city. OK, <laughs> responsibility, whatever your job is or whatever your responsibility is. If it conflicts, not just conflicts, but it uh, prohibits or I'm sorry, if it prohibits or hinders the operation of the city. That's where the conflict come in, but the supervisor, as it states, uh, we sincerely hear uh, 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 religious belief, but it would only conflict if it prevents the city from functioning. Okay. God, would you want to be the one who has to decide whether somebody's being sincere about their Well, it is, it, okay, it, it, okay, <laughs> if there's a religious though. belief that keeps the city from, from, from functioning and you hold a position that is 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 uh is required for the city to let's say the mayor or well any position I don't care, and the city can't do what its normal practices and normal procedures is, and someone's religious belief prevent the city from going forward or from continuing to work, then we have a conflict or this okay, all right, that's what it's stating. OK, it's not a decision. OK, it's like if you can't if you are a d d disabled person and you can't perform uh, at that responsibility to which you came in on a hired as OK, and the city and, and there's a repercussion because you can't perform it because of your disability now. OK, so the city have a responsibility to say, hey, listen, we understand that you can't do this no more, but the city has to continue to function. Does that make everything right. a little bit that's, clear? That's right. The, uh, does, does that make it clear? Because the city's responsibility is to function or keep doing what it do, keep functioning. Just okay. that on, the, but to make the religious accommodation, I would like, and you guys can do whatever. It's, it's my my hope that they get a full hearing and that that that, that they're not unreasonably withheld and there is could be a valid demonstrable reason why we can't do this but it's because of this specifically you know it's not it's not unreasonable that's okay. all i'm trying to and then i've said my piece and it's pretty good <laughs> right, so we right, are uh, 15 minutes over do what we're 15 minutes over Please. i'm good for another 10. i don't have a okay. not until one you know, I will try my darndest to. I'm still in, so I'm. <laughs> I yeah, so you can go. Yeah, I have another meeting actually. Okay, so well, we have to watch. Can we table this? Two, two reporting three. procedures. The like human resource may transfer improper government action to another, what, private public agency, to, for investigation of human resources. And I think there's a scrivener's or something's <laughs> missing there on that one. It says they can refer it to another, and you're saying it maybe should say to another wow. employee or supervisor or something. We can add that on the note. Are we close? I got one, I think. Because uh, we, we are revisiting this at the next meeting, yeah, too. We so. are. Yeah. You thank know, you. If, thank you very if, much for the time. If, if I may, I mean, if you want to submit whatever your you want to submit whatever your comments are before between now and the next meeting, then we could take a look at what your concerns oh, that's are. That's a great idea. Perhaps address them before they become concerns. That's a People great appreciate idea. It. Yeah. 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 Great idea. And that goes for oh, any yeah. of the other board yep. members. I mean, some of the, you know, the typos. Yeah. Those, and, uh, are, yeah. those are easy to address yeah. outside of this meeting, not to circumvent the public process. But. Right, right. And I just I didn't have time through Tuesday and then to get the Tim memo typed up. But and that's why but I try to move through fast. Yeah, like, what's the agenda thank for thank you for indulging me for a few more minutes, guys. Yeah, I appreciate it.
I'm sorry. Do the agenda, agenda for next, for next time, time will be to review this again to hopefully get to a recommendation. Or oh, Juneteenth. This and yeah. Juneteenth. Yes. So you're going to put it out as a public hearing so we don't trip over anything. And make sure that the agenda, keep your agenda. Yeah. So, so as a practice, that's what we're doing, right? Right. We're, yes. we're posting these as public hearings right. as a practice. All the time. Okay. And so, and then when you post it as a public hearing, then the 10 days, it has to be posted to the website, right? Uh, I, I think the, the procedures say posted on the city billable yeah. Uh, yeah. Post oh, and boards and, and were they up there? there all city employees and to COI employees, which is what we do. Yeah. Okay. It, so, so can we just make it, you know, like everything, like when the council does things, they just put it on the, they put it out there so we can see it as opposed to coming up and trying to take it off the board and copying it or something like that. I think that'd be up to the chair how she wants the meeting to go. I think if something's presented for a public meeting 10 days in advance of our meeting, and we're the ones that are running the public hearing, excuse me, the public hearing, then I want to know about it as soon as possible. Yeah. If things change, I get it. Like, and I'm good with that. But I think that if somebody says to me, I know you're on the personnel board and we're having a hearing in a couple of weeks and I don't know what we're talking about. Go ahead. I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. So just send it. I mean, and if it changes, I agree. we get that. Yeah. I want you to keep working. I don't want anybody to stop working at the two out, mm -hmm. you know, like okay, we've got to sit on it for a hearing. Yeah. Especially with something that's not. Okay. Good. Easy. <laughs> this was a good meeting. This was very, very productive. We got through 14 or 15 pages, two policies, books. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> okay, I think it's clear on what we're doing next time. Mm -hmm. And will we add this to, to try to. Next month? No. 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 The second week of the month, maybe? Or... Uh, yeah. Give me a second. I need to tell you one more. Uh, I'm with you. What are we with? Um, nope, I'm, I'm good. Okay, we're good. So uh, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Yes. Motion, second. <laughs> Eleven. All in favor, say bye. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, sir, we'll take care of Thank you. Take care. <laughs>